Hey, my name is Tim Sekou, a recovering Type A and aspiring Type B, heart-led leader. After selling my first tech startup in Silicon Valley due to personal misalignment in 2018, I am now backpacking around the world for a year with the intentions of healing myself, recharging my battery, and seeking what problem pains my heart to see exist. I'm here to take you on my journey, to stay in touch with you all, and share my learnings to open up new gateways of inspiration and awareness. Hello, and welcome to week 12 of my world backpacking travels around the world this year. And greetings from Colombia. So, for week 12, I and my friend decided to trek the Salkantai trek to Machu Picchu for five days and five nights, which was an insanely challenging but beautiful experience both from a physical growth and mental growth. So after week 11 of sitting with the three plant medicines, I decided that it would be perfect timing to really immerse into nature, uh, disconnect from the digital world, and really just integrate these lessons that I received from these past week's experience in nature, hiking to Machu Picchu. I had intentionally planned this with my friend and thought, wow, this is going to be epic, and it was absolutely epic. And I'm so excited to share what happened and some beautiful photos and videos that uh, you get to just breathe and enjoy. So my friend and I went to Cusco and planned our five day, five night trek with this local operator called Alpaca Expeditions. I highly recommend Alpaca Expeditions because they hire all locals to operate the tours with us. And we got to not only meet them, but also know that our, in, our enjoyment was directly benefiting them and they got to also experience the beautiful trek and nature with us. I'll include their link in the description below, so feel free to take a look and uh, book with them if you ever feel called to head out to Peru for these amazing tours. All right, so how did the trek go and what happened? So we trekked for five days and five nights and uh, day one was the most challenging one because not only was it one of the longest uh, treks for those five days, but also the most intense in terms of how much elevation we hiked up because it was about 18 kilometers of hiking. We woke up early in the morning around 5 a.m ate breakfast and walked and trekked towards this beautiful sacred lake called Umentai Lake. And while it was a little bit overcasted and cloudy, when we got there, it was mesmerizing. The uh, scenery looks like uh, these beautiful snow-capped mountains behind this just serene, tranquil lake. And just sitting there and just breathing in that amazing crisp air was just so, so feeling great. And so after that, we went back down and little did I know that we would be trekking another pretty treacherous mountain. So the trek to Umantai Lake was about two hours straight up. And when we were coming down, I felt so great because other people were trekking up. I was like, we just conquered this. We're gonna go towards the next part of the trek, which will be great. But little did I know that the next part of the trek would be absolutely uh, challenging physically because there's another straight uphill towards uh, this beautiful mount, snow-capped mountain called Sakentai Mountain, which was about 4,200 uh, meters above sea level. So it was another, what, four or five hours of trekking uphill, which was absolutely physically gruesome. Um, there were many, many times where it was just raining and pouring, and me and my my poncho, I was just like, what am I doing? Like, can I actually do this? Doubting myself, really wanting to possibly just give up and go back and say like, look, I'm just enjoying the scenery, but I don't want to trek this. And I noticed my mind really going off into all these stories and really trapping itself into this mental loop of self-doubt. And I also noticed myself completely out of flow many times because of the physical pain that was happening. And it didn't help that I had a backpack that I decided to overpack carrying that and trekking up the hills and mountains for some time. What did help was um, this constant reminder that I'm gonna do this and I can do this and everything is in the mind to trick you, um, to really 
uh, just immerse myself in the nature and, and take a, a beautiful look around what was surrounding me, including llamas that would just come around and walk around, which was absolutely just an authentic experience that I always imagined what would happen in Peru happening right in front of me. But after day one, we landed in this beautiful campsite surrounded by the Umantai Mountain as well as the Salkantai Mountain and just immerse, like, and just really enjoy the scenery, had an amazing dinner, and went to sleep early to go into day two. So thank God for day two, because it was mostly downhill and flat. And while it was planned for a 20 kilometer walk, we actually got even more lucky in that there were some unforeseen landslides that took out the path, that then we had to take a bus to our campsite. So we felt absolutely blessed and just the answer to our prayers of having a, an amazing rest day. Um, and so for that day, we just trekked downhill, went through a beautiful high cloud uh, forest um, and just, again, just breathed in all that nature, feeling a, a sense of confidence coming back to be like, I can do this. This is still beautiful and, and I'm gonna grow from this. And we landed in a beautiful Hobbit house as our second night's accommodation. And that was amazing because uh, we had a jacuzzi as well. So my friend and I took some magic mushrooms and decided to just lay out in the jacuzzi and really just warm up our bodies and loosen our muscles and just rest because day one was absolutely challenging. I got a great dinner and I decided to do some reading. And I share this because this reading was absolutely perfect timing in that there was this quote from a Buddhist monk that said, suffering equals pain times resistance. And I remembered pain is, while pain is inevitable, suffering is optional. And this formula absolutely proved that because if we wanted to accept that pain is a constant, let's say one, and resistance is a variable that means you can go from zero to 10, zero being complete surrender and acceptance, and 10 being absolute resistance. So what either one, the pain, times zero, complete acceptance and surrender, or one, the pain, times 10, total resistance, will give you the type of suffering that you have made for yourself. And so that was absolutely perfect timing because the next day, day three, was an absolutely another challenging day where we would hike about 12 kilometers uphill uh, to this mountain campsite that would overlook Machu Picchu. Now, while the goal of getting there sounded very appealing, the actual process was absolutely challenging and gruesomely painful. Um, and I just told myself and my friend that, look, we can just accept or resist what's happening in our bodies right now, this physical pain. And based off of that, if we can accept it, look, we'll still feel the pain, but it's not gonna bother ourselves so much in our minds and suffer into this mental loop of stories after stories of self-doubt. And we kept reminding ourselves of that and it was just so helpful. So we got to this coffee plantation on day three as well, where we would try local coffee. And our guides and our porters and our chefs had heard that we had some mushrooms and were curious about it because they had never taken it. And so my friend and I uh, decided to give some of the mushrooms to them and really we set some intentions and answered any questions of doubt around this experience and they took it and we all took it and we all hiked together and it was just so much fun. It was so beautiful because they felt like their uh, time of carrying all this equipment was much lighter, <laughs> so physically helpful. For me, it was just such a, a connection to the beautiful Andes Mountains that we were surrounded by and hiking and trekking. We got to this point where we were at the top of the mountain and there was just this beautiful swing set overlooking the top of the world. And I've never done something like this, but this was a first time that I can say I can check off this swinging on top of the world uh, idea and it literally happened. So we arrived in our campsite overlooking Machu Picchu and that was mesmerizing. Got some dinner and went to sleep early to wake up for day four.
Day four was much more easy, but long. It was around 14 kilometers of walking that uh, was mainly downhill and flat. And we would end up in this town called Aguas Calientes, which is the town right below Machu Picchu. I was personally excited because I had a deter determination to book a massage uh, when we got there. And that was my prize for getting there. And we trekked through all the way to the town, obviously with immersed in some pure beauty as well, and uh, got a massage, got a hot shower, which was godsend because we had only cold water for the last few days. And it was just another beautiful feeling of confidence arising that we had finally made it right before Machu Picchu. And it was worth the work and we deserved it as we put in these days of trekking. And we had calculated, we had almost reached 50 miles of walking up and down and flat in the last four days. And day five, day five was the magic day as we went up to Machu Picchu early in the morning. We decided that we had some mushrooms left to uh, consume that in the morning, set some intentions to really connect and learn with Machu Picchu and go learn Machu Picchu. So we got up there and it was just so beautiful because there was not only some clouds still there, but no one was there. And it was just pure quiet. And you can touch the stones and really feel connected to the history that was built in the 1400s and just immersed in the education that our guide was giving, all coupled together so well. And it was just so beautiful to be at this sacred site and cross off Machu Picchu as the second of seven world wonders that I have visited. I would highly recommend those who feel called to really immerse into nature in Peru to check out the Salkantay Trek, which is the alternative to the Inca Trek, the, which is the most popular one, because you'll just be surrounded in nature and we were uh, really just by ourselves. We didn't see another human being outside of our group for four days throughout the whole trek. And so if you really just want peace, nature, and tranquility, I highly recommend the Salkin Thai Trek. And to book it with the group that we did, which I can vouch for them, it was just called Alpaca Expeditions. So that was my Machu Picchu trek. Just so beautiful, mesmerizing, full of opportunities to learn and really elevate my confidence with the physical limitations that I have raised for myself. And I'm really excited to share week 13 and 14 combined as I head out to Colombia in Cali to experience my first 10 day silent Vipassana meditation retreat where I will be in complete silence for the whole 10 days practicing Vipassana meditation for about 10 hours a day and just so excited to share the downloads, the techniques and the messages and the wisdom that I acquired from that uh, within this deep self healing and self work. Again, so appreciative of your time and really hope that you enjoyed these beautiful sceneries from this beautiful Mother Earth and this uh, Salkantai track to Machu Picchu. Thank you again so much and I look forward to talking with you guys soon again. See you guys next time.